This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and this is my ottoman. I loved it because I love the patterns and the colors. My husband on the other hand, who's in the back row, hates it. I thought if I could show him my vision as to how it would work in the living room, he would get on my side. So I went on Pinterest and I googled what exactly this color is for an accent chair and what this color is for a rug or a curtain. And it took me hours and hours to find out I couldn't find it. The human eye can see 16 million colors, but you only get 16 color categories to choose from from the average retailer. This is odd when you consider that shoppers say 85% of the reason they select a certain product is because of the color. It's tough when there wasn't a single way to search by color until now. I'm Sam Smith, founder and CEO of Vision. We have a mobile application that uses true color data to allow shoppers to search for decor and apparel by exact color. The reason why I brought this ottoman today, other than the fact that it looks awesome, is because if you see it in this light right now, and if you take this ottoman outside, these colors change extremely. So what we focus on is the true color data, which is the data the designer uses to communicate what this color is to the manufacturer to ensure that there's color continuity. So if you're going to be searching for something using the Vision Mobile app, you would take a picture of this ottoman or you would use the URL to conduct a search. We use computer vision to allow you to say, hey, we know that this is an ottoman, is this something that you're searching for, is it a home decor, et cetera. We also use this color data, as well as your user preferences and fashion trends, to help you complete the look. So let's say you were my husband and you were being proactive and trying to figure out how this would work into our room. You would use that image and you could see other decor that would match in your own living space based on what the image is. The way that we make money is through impressions and clicks. So if I'm a user and I'm going through the complete the look, every single time that a product appears, I get money from the retailer. If you click through on that, we also make money as well. We do have other methods and revenue streams too, including this click and impression model, which includes the color identification and classification of the products themselves, as well as the forecasting data. Folks don't understand how important forecasting data is to the retailer themselves. They spend millions a year trying to figure out exactly what you're going to be purchasing this season. This is something um, that causes $253 billion of overstock and out of stock products in their stores and online. Based on the revenue streams that I mentioned, as well as a conservative growth analysis, we see that two years after our MVP is in August in 2020, we'll make about $63 million net earnings. To give you scope, that's about 258,000 users conducting 100 searches a year. I know what you're all thinking. How are we going to do this? And it's all very much dependent upon initial traction. So I wanted to make sure I let you know exactly how we're going to achieve this. Firstly, Vision is already attached to an affiliate program that is capturing 800 different brands and their products. Our goal is obviously to get the brands on our own pricing structure as well as identify their colors. But we do have products right now if consumers want to search. Lastly is the shoppers themselves. Our go-to-market strategy is to focus on decor and interior designers because they have such a high need for color search. We already have 200 designers on our wait list. And out of those designers, 65% say it takes at least an hour to conduct a color search. And it's something they do with quite frequency. We also have partnerships, which I won't go into too much about. Um, we can go through it in the Q&A, that allow us to have access to retailers, their color data, as well as interior designers off the bat. And if you were wondering, hey, she said I can't take an image of this and get an exact color match. How is she going to do that with her mobile phone? We have a partner called Data Color. They have a color reader appliance, which attaches in our in-app search, which allows you to take the appliance, put it on the ottoman itself, and actually conduct an exact color search if you so choose. Oop, let's go back one. So we have three founders working. I'm Sam Smith, obviously. I said that twice now. Um, I have a background in startups. My two other co-founders have a background in product business development excuse me, product development from retailers, as well as uh, finance. We have advisors from companies such as Microsoft, Nordstrom's Apple, Apple and House, who range in color management, um, sales, as well as technology and UX. Um, and we are currently raising $550,000 in our seed round. Our MVP will be released in August. We anticipate a February 2019 launch. 
And if you want to learn more about Vision, definitely follow us on social media. Um, visit our website, vision.co, um, and come up to me afterwards and ask me all the questions you want. Thank you. I'll start off. Okay. Uh, good job, Sam. Thanks. Uh, you captured my attention right away. Uh, it's, it's good to have a show and tell. Uh, yeah. It's always nice when you have a physical product that you can bring it in. Uh, I love how you started off with a story as well, you and your husband. Uh, it kind of engaged us right away as opposed to jumping into statistics and, and numbers and so forth. Uh, one area, if you could explain it a little bit more, it seems like you have multiple customer segments. You sort of have the user who might be searching online and trying to solve it for, for the personal use. You've got the decor and the interior designers. Mm -hmm. And you almost have the retailers as well, which benefit from the overstock. So I'm a little confused as to kind of who your core customer is and definitely. who you focus on. If you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, more. that's a great question. So um, we definitely pool retailers and shoppers into different segments. We focus on interior designers first because our theory is if we can make a search that's good enough for an interior designer, it'll trickle down. We'll have those opinion thought leaders, which will enable the shoppers themselves to have the ultimate search available to look for products. And while color is our definite differentiator, because we're the only ones focusing on it, um, that's not the only component. Once we get folks in there, they'll realize that any product that they're looking for a specific description or specifications, they'll be able to find it through uh, vision. Uh, but yeah, the key is this, those retailers and the um, shoppers themselves. The retailers benefit in, in multiple ways because they will have access to the color identification process as well and the colors swatches and everything for their own website for their own personal use, but they technically don't have to do that to be a part of our um, vision application if they just want to sell on our mobile app. Okay, thanks. And a, a follow-up to that is, uh, that makes sense to me, because I think the designer's going to save their time, so yeah. it's valuable to them. It's a trade-off of time, right? Uh, so what's your go-to-market strategy to reach them? How do you reach out to all the designers in the country, in the world? Yeah, there's and how 60, do you get to them? Yeah, there's 66,000 interior designers um, in the United States. We're focusing on the United States to begin with. Um, what's nice about our strategic partnership with Data Color is that they already have uh, 5,000 interior designers on their appliance. They just released it in February. They've already conducted a million color searches. Um, so they're going to be co-brand marketing with us. We're also speaking with High Point Market about how we might be able to work with them. Um, to reach interior designers as well. Um, definitely, we're only aiming for a small amount, up between 500 and 1,000 interior designers to allow us to better survey and understand exactly how we might be able to improve this before we launch in February. Good job, Sam. Thanks. I uh, actually heard your pitch probably a year ago. Yeah, a long right at the beginning. You've, you've, done a, you've done an amazing job in, in coming up, and it's a much more clear, so Kudos to you, and I think you thanks. broke off from your last company too. So that's yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Um, a couple of things. First of all, I'm actually building a house right now. Congrats! This, this the, app. You are our first customer segment well, that we're trying to attack. <laughs> and that's where I'm wondering if there's a way for you guys to start looking at building groups. Um, I can give you an example. Like we were trying to to put a roof on our house. Right. And me and my wife drove around for hours and hours looking at roof colors, and guessing <laughs> what the roof colors were. For all spouses. Um, so I don't know if that's an option for you to expand. I know you're talking about interior designers. Yeah. In my experience, interior designers don't have the money. It's the building groups that have the money. So right. if there's a way to, to, to tie that in. Yeah, that's a perfect point because that's actually our next segment of customers that we're looking to attract. We're focusing not only on the builders, but also just on new movers in general by using things like Zillow, um, scraping folks who are moving recently are going to be selling their house, knowing that they're going to be in the market. And that's when people are at their prime. Anytime there's a certain transition, that's when people are most likely to spend money. Um, so we're looking at that as well as the new mover coupons as yeah. well. Um, because if any of you got that when you guys move for the first time, coupons, uh, we'll have, we're trying to tie physical elements into our online app, enabling people to maybe take a picture of something like a postcard in that new mover to show them exactly how they can conduct a search. Okay, no, that, that's good. And the other thing is, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a way for lighting. So if you look, for example, your ottoman on there, yeah. it looks completely different than in here. So yes. if there's a way to tie that into to your app, I think that would be very, very helpful as well. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And that's why we are, to begin with, obviously using the images that are presented online, but our key focus is ensuring we get that color data to ensure that you can um, get something with inaccuracy. Um, the other thing, and again, because we're going through this home building process right now, um, I can tell you one of the challenges that we saw with the companies like Wayfair and yeah. others, there's too many options right. and too many selections. So 
Is there a way you guys are going to try to combat that with, with trying to limit the number of options that are pe people are looking Definitely. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it depended upon what you're looking at. There are 500 different types of chairs. Um, I don't know if you guys knew that. That's a fun fact. Um, if you think about it like folding in a Rondack, so many. Um, so we're going to be leveraging something like computer vision. So if you have an idea for a chair and you can't quite figure out what the shape of it or what type it is, we're going to be using computer vision to enable us to say, this is what this is in the image. Is that what you're looking for to help limit that search? For the search engine itself, we are putting the different requirements that will allow you to get more fine-tuned if you wanted to get specific results. Are you talking about, did I answer your question? Yeah, no, because I mean, you go to Wayfair, you enter lights, you have 55,000 options. It's, yeah. it's, it's overwhelming. It is, yeah. Um, no, I, th I think you definitely did. Um, the other thing I was going to ask, just competition. Um, you know, Pinterest, yeah. Google Shop, how are you going to kind of differentiate yourself between a Pinterest or a Google Shop? We actually are not looking at Pinterest as a competitor. We're looking at putting them, integrating into our app. So folks, if you wanted, we have a system in which you can save products as well. Um, no one wants to resave all of their Pinterest boards if you're super invested in that. Um, and if you have a dream home already set up on Pinterest, we want to give you the ability to pull it in. Um, so they have open APIs that allow you to do that. Yep. Um, as far as who our competitors are, we see more of a house as a competitor. Um, but those types of individuals we also see as the folks who will potentially acquire us. Um, so we don't view them negatively. We're trying to showcase our best product and see what they do with it. And then of the 550000 you're raising, how are you guys looking to distribute that money from yeah. sales and marketing to development? Yeah, so obviously marketing is a huge element of what we're doing. Um, only half of that is necessary to get what we need to get to launch. Um, we'll have a little bit of runway, but the rest is going to go towards marketing initiatives um, because that is such an essential component to what we're doing. Also working in trade shows and things along those lines. And then who on your team is doing the marketing and sales? Is that, so is that your background? or Right now, um, business development and marketing is somewhat uh, my background, and that's gonna, I'm going to be focusing on that. We're going to be hiring a marketing individual to focus on that because it is so intensive. It takes a lot of time. Yep. Um, so that is going to be one of our first five hires. The other three are going to be developers. Okay, great. That's all I had. We might be, are we out of time? We have three minutes. Three minutes, okay. I'll stick to most... Oh, do I need that? <laughs> uh, I'll stick to mostly uh, just uh, business model things that I, I think are important to think about. I won't comment on the rest because I have zero style. Um, I want I, for pitch, uh, you know, kind of uh, necessity. Use of proceeds is hugely important. That's kind of what Todd was alluding to. What are you going to do with the five hundred and fifty grand, right? And uh, I'd have to know at what valuation because you want to know, you know, at what level you're diluting yourself and what's available. So I'd go a little bit further there. You're probably one of the best presenters I've seen in the last three years. So you did a fantastic job. I, I think this is one of the best ideas I've seen. I have some uh, concerns about the business model. So I just want to throw out a couple things. First is, do you have any IP that's protectable? Yeah. So one of the most valuable things that we have is our data itself. The color identification process, there is no universal standard for color. So we're going to be using our partner, Color Solutions International. Um, they're the leading provider of color standards, but their competitors are like Pantone, uh, Acroma. We're going to be using their standards as our universal system because they are giving us access to exact color data for the retailers if the retailer gives permission. Um, this makes it so if someone comes along and they decide to do um, a color scheme, they would have to either have CSI standards or some sort of Da Vinci code to figure out exactly how. Um, that color is interpreted. As far as patent, we don't have any patents um, or anything along those lines, but the difficulty of getting the color data is the reason why you don't see it available right now. So we believe that with our process and um, our unique identifiers, we can at least protect um, to a certain extent where we can get into the market and make some ground. Okay. Um, that's good. That's good. I, I think that uh, I worry about competition mostly. Yeah. I, Two things. One, I always get fearful when people are asking for relatively small sums of money but require tremendous amounts of customer acquisition because uh, acquiring customers is always a hundred times more expensive than you think. Right. Uh, so just think about that. I, I would also say uh, breaking the behavior associated with search on right. um, you know kind of uh, large installed bases is insanely difficult. Yeah. So far, I don't know how many people search the internet yesterday, but you probably use one of like five sites, right? You got uh, if you're searching for your kind of stuff, maybe Pinterest, whatever. The rest of you are going to raise your hand about Google, right? right. So that behavior is it, it is very very ingrained in people's um, kind of day to day um, searching on the web. So I, I wonder about if there is something that is difficult in here, or maybe it's the aggregation of data. 
then why not uh, an infrastructure play? Why isn't this an exposed API to Wayfair so that they can hit an API and pull in the data and in their shopping experience, they can get the essence of your product or your technology? Like, yeah. I worry about the customer acquisition side of this and breaking consumer behavior. That's a great question, and I feel like it kind of hit on two points, which is how are you gonna ensure that we can get break those habits? Um, as well as why not go direct to retailers. And since I have 10 seconds, I'll tell you very fast. Um, we're focusing on retention first, which is why we're not shying away from Pinterest. We want to pull people into what they're accustomed to. Our focus is getting that board ready and then engaging them so much so that we maintain the right users. As far as the direct to retailers play, um, this is something that we're, we're going to be doing. Um, our thesis is if we get in, we match your color already and you can see how effective our model is, it's gonna be an easier cross-sell upsell once we have you in. Especially because the color identification takes the longest amount of time, we can make money while we're making that sale. So I, I would just say this, my one recommendation for what it's worth is I would take every penny of the 550 grand and do something with your product that is sensible and protectable intellectually. And then, I, then, I, then you've got lots of time. You can go to retailers and acquire customers. This, this feels like something Thank you. I'll take